Hi, welcome back to Stock Talk. This is Joe Rabel with Rabel Stock Research. So uh, what I want to do today is go a little bit deeper into MACD and actually talk about a pattern that is a little bit different. Um, I don't think you will have read it anywhere else. So let's go ahead and get into this uh, agenda. So um, what this is, is a different version of divergence. Uh, sometimes when a stock is making a bottom, we don't see the standard type of divergence pattern. Um, and I also think you have to look at this pattern in relationship to what's going on in the uh, price pattern along with this moving average. And I'll show you um, how I come up with this. So this is something that wasn't in my book, but I added to the course. Um, and then I also do go down to the smaller time frame to show you how to implement it. Uh, and then after we do that, we're going to go through the uh, stock requests that came through. So let's go ahead and get going on this lesson. Okay, so the pattern that I'm looking at is a combination of price and MACD. Now, on the left, I've got AMD weekly, and on the right, I've got the AMD daily. Uh, I want to show the daily chart as well because I want to show how the uh, entry pattern uh, will often develop uh, in this setup. So if you look at the MACD on, uh, on the weekly chart, we're, we're making new lows with price. So we make a new low here and MACD makes a new low in this move, right? And then we rally up, make a new low, and this makes a new low in this move. Rally up again, we make a new low here. Okay, so we have confirmation. We don't actually have what is commonly called momentum divergence. Okay, um, so in this case, we have to look for maybe some alternative signs of a reversal when you don't get momentum divergence to show up. And one of the things that I've noticed is a, a pattern where um, the you rally up to the 18 and then instead of jetting away, you see how every time we hit the 18 here, we jet it away, hit the 18, jet it away, hit the 18, jet it away. We didn't linger around this line. We, we got up to it. Now this we got through, but then when we went back down through it, we didn't linger around. We just kind of took away and we jetted away from it. Notice what happened here. We, we rally up and we have intersection with the line on this bar, intersection on this bar, intersection on this bar, this bar, this bar, and this one, not quite, but really pretty close. So not, it's really not all th that dislocated. And also, if you notice, we've got two really tiny bars. There's not like, there's expansion. You see how we got expansion here as this was jetting away? This actually, as it got dislocated from the line, marginally, it did it without any new momentum, really. So I view this as you're almost looking at like, um, you're looking at this and saying, I want to find something that has almost a, a bull flag look to it. You see how this had like a pretty strong move here and now you're back, you're pulling back. And the way you can tell is if there's intersection with the line. If, if this just goes up and jets away, again, just like this, it went up, touched it, and then jetted away. It doesn't qualify for this pattern. And I know I call this a MACD pattern, and it is. But we want to see this taking place in price while the MACD lines are actually going up. Now, we get the little pinch to develop where the MACD is pinching in towards the signal line, but the, the key to this pattern is that the MACD line is actually rising, and it's going counter to um, the direction of price and the uh, 18. All right, this is a pattern right out of my course, and uh, you know I go to in a lot of detail on it, but it, it, the, the reality is, is that we've got a situation where this is a different form of divergence because if you think about it, this is going down and the momentum is starting to shift and go the other way. It's not confirming this pullback, um, especially when you look at it in the form of uh, the signal line. All right. So uh, when I see that and I get down and especially start to see these small bars start to show up, I want to go down to the smaller time frame. Now, uh, I've talked about this a lot on this show and uh, using two time frames together. And, and the reality is we have a pullback on one time frame. And that's what this is. This is a pullback. 
okay? Pull back off of a sort of a spike low is how I would read it. And then when I get the pullback on this time frame, I want to evaluate that on the smaller time frame, right? I got a pullback on this time frame. It's a simple pullback. I want to go and see what is going on during that pullback. Um, and what we can see is we had a move down. It's it's a little bit more complex than just a straight move down like it is on the higher time frame. We get lower high, lower low, another um, lower high, lower low, another minor lower high, and then we get kind of a spike reversal. And MACD has overrun here. Okay, now there's two things I always look at when this is taking place. We have overrun on this time frame, um, on this indicator, but on this indicator, we have no sign of real strength in the sellers. As this drops down, the red is not very strong, and you can notice that, that the ADX can't even get moving at all. It's flat and low, it's down near 10, 11, 12. When you see that, you're thinking, I want to play a move to the upside. Okay, I know I don't have strength in the sellers. I showed some strength in the buyers after a spike low. This was a spike low, kind of like a climax low. And then we get strength in the buyers to show up. And then during this correction, we don't have real strength in the sellers. Um, so from there, you can look at it any number of ways. I'm not going to take the trend line break most of the time because, um, or the crossover because there's overrun here. I usually like to take the second signal, which happened to be um, this pinch, uh, which did have a little gap in it, but this shows the signal here. Beautiful uh, pinch play crossing the zero line. And notice how green DI was also crossing back above and holding above red and 25. So I got confirmation on the DI. I definitely had my signal. This is one of my favorite uh, pinch play patterns where you're crossing the zero line. Um, if you wanted, if you didn't like the gap, you could have played uh, this pinch play here. We got a lower high, lower high, and it had a second pinch right before this move. Now, I believe this was up on earnings. So if you want to play something like this for earnings, you, you want to do options, I think. That's what I would do. I don't like to take, I've done this, I've mentioned this on the show, I don't like to take buy stock right before earnings, but I will, if I like the overall setup and feel pretty strongly about the potential, I, uh, especially on the higher time frame, I will usually uh, use options when I want to play something like that. All right, so this just gives a little insight into another MACD pattern that I think you want to be on the lookout for when it coincides with what's going on in the price pattern. All right, let's go ahead and get into the stocks. Just briefly, my services can be found at rabelstockresearch.com. Uh, I get a lot of questions about the new course that I put out. Um, so just to give you an idea, there is additional information beyond the book that I have in the book. Uh, I've given a significant more detail and I've been told even by people who have watched my videos on YouTube going back two or three years that they're learning a lot more, uh, especially in the order that it's giving and the homework that I give. Um, so there, I think there's going to be value over and above, even if you've been watching uh, my work over the last few years. All right. So uh, anyway, that hopefully answers some questions. Uh, let's go ahead and get into the analysis now. OK, so I'm going to start out with Meta. Um, this wasn't a specific request this week, but I get a lot of questions about this and I have over the course of the last few months. It also plays into the pattern that I have shown over the last month or two in terms of playing a reversal pattern counter to the monthly trend where we have like a trading move, a definitive trading move. And this played out really well from that standpoint. The other thing is today, what I'm going to do is I am going to cover the QQQ instead of the SPX, um, just to give a little bit different flavor. Um, and the strength of the uh, Qs is pretty interesting. And I also, because I didn't get a lot of requests, I am going to go through the requests that came through, but um, I wanted to go through the uh, individual sectors and show which ones I think have the, most, uh, the best potential. Now, in the short term, we're seeing some real strength out of some beaten up areas. And uh, I wanted to just follow up and make sure I give you my insight into what I'm seeing, at least, and what I'm expecting. So let's go ahead and start with Meta. Um, the, the pattern that I think is really interesting, so we didn't have really a divergence pattern, although you know this went to a new low, and this really wasn't confirmed, but they're too far apart. That, that's too far. I don't really look at that as divergence when they're that far apart. And, and really, the ADX showed no sign of uh, divergence really at all from the low. So as I said, we look for 
for other patterns when that happens. And uh, in this case, we didn't get that parallel line set up. But what happened is you can see this looks pretty climatic, but look at where this took place. Our big round number. Go back and look at the uh, sh the trading play that I talked about in Tesla, turning at the big round numbers. Right. Always look for these big round numbers and see if we um, are coming into support or are getting really overdone three straight weeks down and then hitting this hundred number. Um, and then we get some sign of climatic activity. And I'll just show you real quick. Look at the size of the volume. That is absolute people just puking out. And look at the proximity of where it takes place. Notice how this is happening in the fourth quarter after a big drop. This is a great sign of tax loss selling taking place, especially when you see um, the volume expansion. So when we see, you know, the, the, um, the tax loss selling taking place, we should be on the lookout for some kind of a rally in the first quarter, uh, which is the type of pattern that I am looking for in, in a stock that gets overdone and stretched away from the 18 month line. So if you notice, we've got um, this setup where we get the spike and this clearly shows like a climax low or, um, you know, a big uh violent sell off to the downside. And then we get a pretty decent retracement. And if you notice what ends up forming here is a um, is a sideways ledge. OK, so we have a spike in ledge pattern. Um, you could almost call this like a little ascending triangle and breaking back above this 125 level was really, really important. It was also a low ADX conditioned play and we had crossed above the zero line in MACD and held that area as this was consolidating. So coming back up through 125 was pretty key. Now, the reason why I like using multiple time frames is it gives me an idea of how much room I have. And when clients were calling me about this, I, I really felt like this, this was one of the bigger um, of the FANG type stocks. This is the one that had a lot of room because of how stretched it got and um, how much room there was up towards the 18 month line. So, you know, not to say that it's always going to go all the way up and it might not go reach 200, 210, but, um, you know, we've made a pretty solid move off the low. And that's what kind of we're looking for in this type of trade. Now, right now, the momentum is con confirming this uh, on an ADX basis, on a daily basis. So I would assume that, yes, this could peak out in here, but we probably are going to need this. Um, to show signs of sellers showing up or some kind of, di of uh, divergence to develop before uh, this, this move is going to end. Um, let's go ahead and get into the cues now. Um, so we've got a similar pattern. It just wasn't as overdone, right? I mean, it didn't get way stretched to the downside, but it was pretty far away from the 18 month line. And uh, we got this pattern where uh, we have classic divergence here. Um, we make a new low here from quarter to quarter, but the MACD doesn't confirm. And then we actually make a slightly higher low and we get a pinch where we hold the signal line on this pullback. Um, now we're getting the benefit of that. And also notice how the strength of the sellers is dissipating, how this continues to drop off. So that gives us the opportunity again to play up towards the 18 month line. We haven't quite reached it yet, um, but we're getting up into resistance. The one encouraging sign that I would say that <clears throat> we're seeing in this that we're not seeing in the S&P yet is look at the improvement in the ADX. We have green DI on the S&P. We have green DI above like this, but we haven't seen the ADX cross above 25, which took place back here. OK, so that gave us pretty good confirmation that there was nice strength here and that we wanted to see this follow through a little bit more. Um, if we see that happen in the S&P, then we could be uh, looking at some kind of a reversal pattern taking place where we can get through the 18 month line. So um, some encouraging signs here, but we've got this big problem, right? I mean, this is a counter trend rally, and I don't think it's just going to go blowing through all this resistance up here. So uh, you have to be aware of the type of pattern you're trading. It's not to say that this can't be played, especially if we get a pullback, there's probably room for another move. But, um, you, you know, and, that, and that's based on the fact that the momentum is confirming. But uh, just got to be careful here because it is counter to the monthly trend. All right, let's go through some of these sectors quickly. Um, I want to show where I like, what I like and what I don't like. All right, I really like what's going on in the XLB. Now, what my subscribers know is I go through every single stock in the material, this, the uh, basic material sector. Anything with a market cap greater than 300 million, I'm going to go 
look at. And uh, I can tell you from the review I did this week on it, it there, there are a lot of attractive patterns taking place in the XLB. Um, now, that doesn't mean that it's going to go st- skyrocketing right now. But if the market's going to turn here, and really make a turn and make something a little bit more meaningful to the upside, I have to evaluate which of these sectors are really going to play. And I would put XLB as one of the top, if not the top performing sector in terms of the overall setup. Now, it's still got as 18 month line that's more flat to slightly declining. Um, and it's not in complete position with the MACD yet. Um, but there's just a lot of good things going on here. Um, one thing that's missing in the short term is we had on this move to the upside, we had really nice ADX confirmation. Now we're moving back up and we haven't quite, it's just crossing 25 right now. I'd like to see a little bit more strength in green DI, maybe break out one more time. But I can tell you from the individual stocks, even if this consolidates a little bit on the weekly, there's a lot of interesting patterns, definitely worth uh, looking at right now. Now on the other end of the spectrum, we've got the communication services, right? This this sector is um, essentially what, we, what we're seeing in meta, right? I mean, overdone, way overdone, tax loss selling into the fourth quarter, sets itself up for a really nice retracement rally in the, in the first quarter. That's generally my rule of thumb. And actually, I want to point out that the same thing holds true when you're going up. If you have a really powerful year, um, a lot of times you'll peak out either in the fourth quarter or early the following year and then go through a correction or a reversal if you're going to reverse. Most of the time, it's just a correction back to support. In this case, I don't think we're looking at a full-fledged reversal yet. I think we're looking at a retracement rally with, that it just had significant amount of room. I mean, this was down, uh, the, what, down in the 40s, okay, and the 18-month line is in the 60s. So we're looking at like a 50% move in an index, uh, a big index that uh, just, it was just too far away. It had gotten too far overdone and uh, really needed to see a little bit of a retracement take place. Now, again, one of the things I'm keying on is watching this relative strength. You see how the relative strength has shown real improvement here? So that's a very good sign for this index. Uh, the problem I've got with it, it's not, so we've broken the downtrend line, but we haven't really turned the trend. We still, similar to the price action, I'm going to want to see a test and a reversal to get a true reversal take place in the uh, relative strength. Um, and so, I, you know, I think we're going to come into some resistance here, probably closer to 60, uh, maybe low 60, something like that. The momentum is good right now. It's not showing divergence or anything. But this isn't a group or a sector that I would be looking at as a leadership, playing a leadership role, in my opinion. I just don't think that's going to happen right now. Um, I think it's going to rally up and it's getting a really good rally. It's played really well. And then I think it's going to um, hit some resistance and go through a sideways phase. Now, energy was the only sector of all, all of these that never broke down, all right? Now, it's actually right now, from a short-term standpoint, it's breaking the 18-week. It's showing a little bit of weakness here, but all of this is taking place above a rising 18-month and has all along. Go and look at all these other sectors. Every one of them broke their 18-month in some way, shape, or form. So I think there's a significant amount of support in the low 80s. Um, even if this wants to pull back a little bit more. We have to watch and make sure we don't see real violence in the decline. But right now, that's not happening. Um, so I think there's going to be a decent amount of support around 80, maybe a test of that area. Um, definitely, I'd want to keep an eye on these. This could be another really good uh, performing sector if the market turns and holds here. Now, XLF is a little bit different. If you look at what's taking place here, it's trying. It's not quite as strong as XLB, or I'll show you XLI in a second. Um, it's trying. It's trying to get itself through this resistance area. We've got this little resistance it's trying to bust through, but it's not showing a lot of vengeance with it. Um, we had a little bit of ADX here, but this is even weaker uh, on an ADX basis than even XLB right now. And more important to me is it hasn't truly gotten through its 18 month yet. It's right on the border. I mean, we're going to need to see upside follow through if this is truly going to make it. Um, and you can see uh, on a weekly basis, we just don't have ADX kicking in yet. Now look at XLI. This is another sector that I would say if the market is going to turn here 
and have a, like a trending move, and I'm not saying go into a new high, but something that could last more than just a week or two, I would be focusing in on some of these industrial stocks. Look at what this has done. Um, you have this really powerful move off the low, undercut the prior bottom, and then we make a strong move. And notice what's been happening since that time. Instead of giving back those gains or testing the 50% retracement or even the 38% retracement, we're lingering up in this high area after a pretty substantial move. So, um, and look at how it's holding the 18 month line rather than like failing at it or sitting at it. Um, the relative strength has been good up until recently. We've kind of pulled back a little bit, but um, we formed this sideways pattern here that if we can break out from that, I think this could be a really attractive area. Um, XLK is similar to the XLC. It just wasn't as extreme. We're going to come into some issues here. We've got some short-term momentum. We got to see how this reacts at the 18 months. So the 18 month on the XLK is uh, 144 and a half. Uh, somewhere between 144 and 145. We want to watch and see, does this fail at that level or does it bust through? Um, right now, I'd be willing to give this a little bit of credit uh, just based on the recent action and the fact that the green DI keeps making a new high. Okay, so consumer staples. So if we look at what's taking place here, notice what, while we're seeing improvement in some of the areas that were beaten up um, in, in the more aggressive areas like XLC having a big day, look at XLK having a big day, um, look at XLY having a big day, right? And then we've got the defensive areas kind of weaker. Um, now, I think this is more of a trading range pattern. It, it made a pretty strong move off the low. You can see this here. It reestablished the support zone. And we still have resistance up here, though. So I'm expecting this to be more of a trading range, maybe with some short-term weakness here. But we've got sideways action rather than any kind of a trend right now. Um, XLRE has shown some pretty good improvement. Look at the thing you always want to do is go back and look at these key support levels. You see how strong a support level this was. Uh, it came back, rallied up, and this is where it formed sort of a channel back in 2020 and then took off from that. That's exactly where we found support. Now, I view this as a counter trend rally working its way back to the uh, 18 month line. Um, still a little bit of room. The momentum is not as good as some of these other areas we're talking about in the short term. So I would be watching the zero line on the weekly MACD because if we fail there, this is probably going to set back um, and do a better uh, testing of the lows. Um, XLU is a trading range in my opinion. Again, spike low, rallied up, and I think we're caught in a range between 65 and maybe 75, 76. Um, XLV is at a really critical point right now. We've got a um, a pretty decent overall pattern here. It's still holding its long-term trend, but it needs to hold here right around 130. I think if we break 130, then this starts to look like a big trading range as opposed to just a pullback to the breakout area and a start move to the upside. Now, if you notice what's forming, we've got an opposing trend pattern. You see how the 18 and the 40 are declining here and the 18 and the 40 are rising here. If we can turn this up here at the support level and we get some new momentum to show up with green DI breaking out, this group could look pretty good. What concerns me is what's causing this uh, relative strength to decline. We've got a lot of big stocks in... Um, the healthcare area, one I'm going to talk about in a minute, uh, that are showing signs of weakness. Uh, a lot of the big drug stocks as well. It looked like they want to consolidate. It just looks like a risk off scenario. Um, I'm sorry, risk on scenario. And stocks and it, stocks like this just aren't playing quite as well. Now, XLY plays with the XLC as well as the XLK. Similar situation, big drop, continued to drop. This showed signs of divergence, and this is actually even more important. This pattern here, we didn't go to a new high. Uh, uh, we didn't get above 25 in the ADX while this went to a new low. Now, another thing I want to mention, just like with the XLB, the XLY, if you go through and look at all the stocks, uh, in the consumer discretionary area, you'd be really surprised to see how many attractive patterns there are. Remember, there's a huge portion of the um, XLY that's that's invested in Tesla and Amazon, which made big lows and now they're trying to rally. So this is what the, this index looks like. We've got a whole bunch of stocks 
in this uh, in this area in consumer discretionary that actually looks really attractive. Um, Google. So um, for Google, it's a similar pattern to the Meta. We've got some room for this to rally. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if this kind of peters out at 108, 110, but we could possibly work our way up towards the 18 month, which is around 118. Um, I don't view this as a short pattern yet. I think it's too early to even think about. Um, it's probably made a near term low. We're just going to have to see uh, what kind of a rally this turns into. Now, SOXL has broken out. Um, out of this really kind of a cup and handle formation on the daily chart with good momentum conditions. And now we've cleared the 18, we held the 18 and now we're cleared the 40. We do have some room for this to roam. The next resistance on this is showing up around 20, 21, 22, something like that. I think that's kind of the next level I'd be watching for. Now, again, if this shows continues to show strength, it could work its way all the way up towards 28. I think you're going to need a pullback on the daily or even possibly the weekly to play this, though. All right. Um, all right. So UNH, this is kind of the opposite end of the spectrum. And look at what's going on in this. This stock's getting hit again today. OK, it was the market has had some pretty good days in here, and this is really struggling. It's breaking the 18 month line. It's showing a lot of weakness. The ADX is finally kicking in to the upside, which is a negative. Um, I think we need a little bit of a minor rally to look at this as a potential short. Um, but overall, this pattern is weakening. It is one I could consider on the short side. It's just not we don't have a really good entry right now. Thanks for taking the time today to watch the show. My services can be found at rablestockresearch.com. Uh, also, if you have a stock request or two, send it to stocktalk at stockcharts.com. Have a great week, and we'll see you next time. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with stockcharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.